Hello friends, welcome. I'm your friend, your host Roy. Today we are talking about series 1, where we are discussing real numbers. This is episode number 15. And today friends, we're going to talk about one very important theorem based on the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So let's get into it. Now the theorem goes like this. Say P is a prime number, any prime number. Then if P divides A square, if P divides A square, where a is any positive integer, then p absolutely must divide a. Now, I know it just sounds like a lot of things going on over here, but really simply put, what it says is, think about a as any positive integer. So, for example, uh, you know, let us just assume that a is maybe 13. I'm randomly thinking of a number. So, a square will be 13 square. So, what the theorem is saying is if P is any prime number, we don't know what P is. But the theorem states, if it is given to you that 13 square is divided by P, then the theorem says that 13, 13 should also be divisible by P. That is what the theorem says. Let's find out how we can prove this. So, let's see. So, it is given that A is any positive integer, right? So, according to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we can express A in terms of its prime factors. Because if you recall, fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that any composite number can be uniquely expressed as product of its prime, right? So, we can write A in terms of its prime factors. So, something like this. Say A equals to P1 multiply by P2 multiply by P3 dot 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 multiply by Pn, where this P1, P2, P3, they are nothing but they are all prime factors of A, right? Now, we can also say that, therefore, if you want to do A square, right? If you want to do A square, then essentially, if you can write A as this, if you can write A in terms of its prime factors, then a square is nothing but the same thing multiply by itself. And then it means that each of the prime factors will be basically squared, right? So a square will be nothing but p1 square, p2 square, p3 square, dot, dot, dot. Now let's call this our equation number one. Let's say this is our equation number one. Now, we also know that p divides a square. Why? Because it is given to us. It is given to us that a square is divided by p. So, from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, it follows that p is a prime factor of a square, right? Because, yeah, clearly a square can be, div can be divided by p. So, whatever the a square is, p must be a prime factor of a square. From the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we can say that. But from equation 1, we just saw that a square is nothing but p1 square, p2 square, p3 square, etc. And I think it is important to understand that each of these are prime factors. And a square is these squares multiplied together. But a square is also p. So what we have here, friends, is that then the uniqueness of the fundamental, of th uh, fundamental theorem of arithmetic, it states that that P1, P2, P3, they are the only prime factors. Because, again, recall that from fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we know that A can be expressed in only one way as product of its prime. So, if we say that these are the only prime factors for A, right? So, what we have here is A square is P1 square, P2 square, P3 square. So, essentially, it is something like you have A square is 2 square, 3 square, 5 square, you know, maybe 13 square. We don't know, but we are just saying that A square is nothing but these squares, right? We don't know what the value of A is, but the fact that A square is this, it means we have A square equals to something like this, right? So, the, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is saying that these are the only prime, you know, in which we can express a square. 
but p is a factor of a square that means p must be one of these values right so what we can say is p must be one of these prime factors so if p is one of these values that is if p is one of p1 or p2 or p3 then clearly we stated initially that these are factors prime factors of a and if p is a prime factor of a then it absolutely follows that p will definitely divide a that means if a square is divisible by p and the remainder is zero then we just proved it follows that then a also will be divisible by p and it is important to note what is p p is a prime number and a can be any integer so friends in the next video we are going to take a look at some of the applications of this very important theorem